Welcome back to the show. I'm your host, Lonnie Ray. I'm diving right into the topic of discernment today. <laughs> I've got a few things to say. Let's rock and roll. Applying the principles of um, the red flags or, you know, being able to recognize a dumbass or trouble before it walks in the front door and puts its feet up on the table or sofa. Um, it starts with discernment. And, and have you ever thought someone was a stud? And you were wrong. They turned out to be a dud. <laughs> How about a friend who didn't turn out to be so friendly? That's why I love this dud, stud, friend or foe. Who gets to stay? Who has got to go? That's what it's really all about, guys. Uh, divine indifference. Objective decision making in your favor. Hey, what a concept. You deserve this. <laughs> Raise the bar. Okay, so a real life example is um, we're all we're we are all out now. <laughs> Say that fast twice. We are all out and about now, kibitzing, having a good time, right? Meeting people, leaving people, creating spaces to meet new people. Da da, you know, it shift is happening, and we don't still have our childhood friends for a reason. We grow and we go. <laughs> That's okay, don't you know? Oh, goodness. So here's a very simple way to tell. Have you ever had someone slam your car door? And you mention, hey, because <laughs> you have to. You better tell them. Don't just whinge over there in the driver's seat. Um, and they keep doing it, right? Okay. I had a gal in my car. And I had just moved to her property. She was showing other red flags, but this one really, this one's a humdinger for me. It's so simple too. It happens to all of us. Anyway, what happened was she would slam the door of my little Kia and it's a tin car. Come on, go easy. And instead of saying, oh, I'm sorry, like try to be more careful. She argued with me and said, I'm not slamming your fucking door. Wow. <laughs> you want everything your way. I'm like, well, here's what a slam sounds like. This is how bad it got, guys, because I mentioned it a few times. I got out of my car and I said, here's how it can be done. Clink. Here's how you're doing it. Kablam. Well, I drive a Jeep and I just, I was just like, yeah, I get it. Just be here now and recognize you're not in a Jeep. That's all I'm asking. Is that too much to ask, guys? But you've had that event, right? It happened in your life. <laughs> or maybe you're the dumbass who doesn't listen and you're the one who's getting told that. Pay attention. It matters. So what I want to do is show you how this, exa this example demonstrates apathy, right? The person doesn't care. They keep doing it. That makes them a repeat offender, right? Um, they don't seem to notice what they're doing. So they're asleep at the wheel. And sometimes they might do it, sometimes they might not, but mostly, eh, it's erratic, erratic behavior. The only thing missing in this for the five red flags of being a dumbass is being weak-willed. And if you stick around and don't say something when you see this, then you're being weak-willed. Don't be a dumbass. <laughs> stand up for yourself. If you want to attract stand-up guys into the foxhole, those who meet your criteria, they have to be at least as strong as you. Don't be weak-willed about it. I want to show you something about this simple thing, though. A person who repeatedly slams your car door, in this example, is, is showing you so many red flags about how they will continue to treat you or regard you. And you can stick around and try to figure it out. You can maybe, like I tried to speak, you know, here, logically, look, here's soft, here's slam. It didn't matter. I, I was trying to argue logic with crazy, apparently. You can't do it. It's like going to ask a liar for the truth. <laughs> Why would you do that? Don't do that. <laughs> it doesn't matter. Delete the need to understand. Don't even worry about it. Forget about it. Just move on because these, I mean, this simple thing, even before you go on that date, 
if that guy slams your car door or if she does that, you know, a couple times, whatever, take note of who you're working with. That is being able to see trouble around the corner before it's even gotten too far, before you've even, you know, formed a bond. That's really important discernment. I want you to apply this in your life. Look at what people are doing because eventually they will do whatever they're doing to other people to you. People do what they do no matter who you are to them. That's just how they are. Just like you. You're a good person. You're out there be bopping around. Yada, yada. You, you know, even if somebody's got a, a frown on their face, you're not going to meet them there. You're going to smile. At least most of the time, right? Because you're just, you're being who you are. No matter who they are. Right? That's the opposite. Like, you can see that, right? You're being who you are. They're being who they are. People do what they do, no matter who you are to them. So do you. So do I. That's a good thing. It doesn't need to be broken down, analyzed to death. Um, <laughs> become a thing. It doesn't need to become a thing at all. So uh, use this in when you're deciding that somebody might be a friend. So that's the friend or foe part. Because we've all blown it, right? We've all like either overridden our little voice saying, don't do it. Or later things showed up and we just kind of like, maybe it'll iron itself out. Maybe it will No, those are red flags and it's, you got to call it. You got to be a stand up guy in your life. And when you do that, you create space for this new raised standard, this bar that you've raised a bit. You're not going for the lowest bidder anymore. Good for you. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> It's a better thing to expand who you are. And um, that means dropping the weights. And um, bye byes um, can be said. Losses will be felt. We'll cover how to, you know, how to bounce back from loss in an upcoming episode. It's important to be able to bounce back. But first, you have to realize you're carrying the weights, right? And then, even before that, is this is where we're at now, is don't even take the weight on, right? Just don't. Somebody slamming your car door, red flags, people, red flags. <laughs> and uh, yeah, as far as dating goes, if you find somebody who's violating your personal space a little too much, uh, leaning in too close or putting their hands on you, mm, they can be pushy later if they're handsy now. All right. Don't don't get any closer to that. That's a controlling person. They represent, uh, or they have a few represent representative flags, red flags too. They don't care. That's apathy. They keep doing it. That's a repeat offender. You know, they, uh, those two qualities right there. When somebody doesn't care how you feel about what they're doing, run, Forrest, run. <laughs> Yeah, so it's the little things that tell you so much. This is how you develop what I call X-ray vision. Make it your superpower, your ability to see beyond what's being presented in a way that, hey, really quick, ask yourself, do I want more of this or less of this? And move your feet accordingly. That's all you got to do, baby. Discernment. It's only everything now. Really trust your gut. And by getting rid of the uh, symbol clanging monkeys, I think you'll have a better time of it, too. Thanks for being with me. I hope you'll subscribe, share the show, I'm getting ramped up to come out and do a class, probably on discernment and dating. Dud, stud, friend or foe, who gets to stay, who's got to go and how to let them go because letting go makes you lighter. <laughs> and when you're lighter, you're brighter. <laughs> That's what we want. Where do party people at? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. This is Lottie Ray, and I'm out for now, but I'll be back.